Hey everybody, this is Ilad, and we are back with a tutorial. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I've been working on a project for the Starmata server, and yeah, this is uh, this massive network of really spaghetti logic that I had going on. Um, trying to create a puzzle where you had to activate uh, four controls in a specific order in order to progress through a door. You know, it's pretty pretty standard adventure game type puzzle. Um, this is the code I came up with. Not code, but the logic. And after spending hours and hours on it, I, I finally got it working. And I walked away from my computer, and about five minutes later it hit me that there was a much easier way to do it. Uh, so this is the new way, and that's what the tutorial is going to focus on. Uh, instead of using this big old spaghetti tangle over here, I use display modules. So uh, if you're not sure exactly what I'm talking about, or if you want to see it in action, uh, these are the four switches. These are four indicators that show me um, that you know which which switch I've hit and whether the order is right. When all four of these light up, these should light up just to show me that I have completed my goal. Right. So the first one second one and then let's say I get these out of order like I hit the the third one wrong it resets all right so well I know that the first two are right obviously the third one must be that one fourth one must be that one and I complete my goal all right so any tap on any button resets the whole shebang if I start wrong to begin with nothing happens right but as soon as I start correctly it all works and as soon as I do something wrong it all resets so pretty standard adventure RPG type puzzle so uh, let me get a little distraction screen up yep and I'll show you how to actually replicate this so to start off with I have four buttons and notice I space them out a little bit more uh, for our demonstration build I've got the four indicator lights and I've got the big indicator that shows me when I've solved the puzzle. Now in an actual puzzle mini game situation, this would be like a doorway would open or something along those lines. Alright, so I go down here. Um, each one of these four buttons is going to be placed adjacent to display module. Right? So let me go ahead and drop those down. Uh, for this, we're going to do this very simply. Actually, the first one, I just want you know, whatever character represents the first one. Easiest way to do it is just to represent it with numbers 1, 2, 3, 4. And that's all I want on this first one, right? Uh, second one, I actually want add to. Yeah. And add 3. And add Four. All right. All right. Now I need another set of four display blocks, and these are going to be. Oops. These are going to be the blocks that actually contain the key for whichever order I should be hitting these in. Uh, so to start off with, I'm just going to do it very simple, very obvious setup. One, two. Uh, that wrong actually. Hang on. Uh, this should be one, two. This should be one, two, three. And this should be one, two, three, four. Right? Okay. Um, underneath each one of those, placement doesn't actually matter, but so I can keep it straight in my head, I'm going to place a sensor block. Sensor block is going to be linked to display module right above it. And it's also going to be linked to one more display module. This is going to be the one that the uh, that actually holds, it's going to be the memory basically, it's going to hold the cumulative input from us tapping our buttons. Each sensor block is going to be looking at that. So with the sensor block linked to both the module above it and this, what it's really doing is it's comparing the two and it's seeing if they match each other. If they do, then it will activate the activation module directly adjacent to it. All right. So far, so good. Now, a 
as each button is activated, uh, it's going to go ahead and it's going to do its magic to test block, right? In other words, the first one's going to reset it to just a one. Every every button thereafter will reset it to, or will uh, will add its own input to it. Very good. Uh, each button will also, after a half second delay, trigger the uh, the sensor module to run the test between the two. And I'm waiting that half second just because I want to be sure that everything happens in the proper order. And occasionally in StarMade, when logical functions execute all at the same time, it can be a little frustrating. To, uh, to, to figure out exactly what's going on. So a little half second delay doesn't hurt anything and it makes sure everything runs smoothly. Each one also feeds into another half second delay. Yeah, I did that right. All right, each one of those half second delays feeds into an AND. Now the other input for each one of these ends is actually going to be a, uh, a NOT module that comes out of the activation blocks here. But before I do that, each activation block should also be toggling a T flip flop. Right? Then also going into NOT. Oh, whoops. Let's do it that way. Just like that. I'm going to go ahead, trigger these, what is it, four times one, two, three, four, just to make sure everything's cycled properly. Two, three, four. Very good. All right, now these knots, as I said, form the second input for the end. Now, every end is going to point into a single button. I'm just gonna kind of tuck it over here off the side where it doesn't do any harm. All right, this button uh, controls our cumulative output, our test block, however you want to think about this block. And what it does actually is it resets it back to nothing. It's empty, no data. Right. I apologize a second ago I forgot about a change I was forced to make to the design. These uh, these delay modules or delay signals don't actually trigger sensor blocks directly and the reason for that is I need a secondary input for each one of these sensor blocks. Unfortunately they can only actually take one input. Uh, so instead what we're going to do is we're going to point these delays into a button and then the button, of course, is going to point into the sensor modules. And what this button is going to do is allow us to trigger all four sensors simultaneously instead of only doing one at a time, which is the way I had it set up. So I apologize for that little uh, misstatement earlier. Now, this button, uh, which, remember, resets the, uh, the test display, also needs to reset the, uh, the flip-flops. We're going to do that not by pointing it into them directly, but rather by pointing it into a series of ands. Each flip-flop also points into an and, and then the and points back into the flip-flop. So when that button activates, it toggles the flip-flop only if the flip-flop is already active. Otherwise, it does nothing. Last but not least, assuming all four flip-flops are active, we want a single AND signal to uh, trigger. That AND will, of course, control the ultimate output, whatever this whole puzzle should do when it's solved. Now, let's see if I actually set this up correctly and didn't miss any steps, shall we? 
Right, first of all, we have that. I missed a step somewhere. Very cool. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, here's what I did wrong. I forgot to tie each flip-flop into the lamp directly above it. The light. Let's grab this one. Alright, so let me just uh, hopefully reset everything. Did it? I think it did. Alright, cool. So, good. Good. Okay, I've got a little issue somewhere. Okay, I see what I did. Somehow, um, I either disconnected this sensor from that display or didn't connect it in the first place. Something like that happened. Alright, so here we are. Um, let's try this again. One, two, three, yeah, four, very good, and mission complete. And any button resets, alright, start wrong, next go to right, it goes ahead and works, immediate reset, alright, looking good. Now, the, uh, <laughs> the logic pipes here actually end up looking pretty awful, I promised you I wouldn't do spaghetti. Uh, you can see that even when I pretend to almost do it compactly, it looks a lot neater. Uh, it's just I spread these out a little bit more for, well, in my head it was for clarity. <laughs> you may disagree with me about how clear this is. Uh, but in any case, it was a fairly straightforward build. It didn't have a ton of this back and forth and all this other nonsense that I had going on over here. Uh, which that worked, but this is just so much easier. It's a little bit more intuitive. All right, so this is useful in a, a number of situations. Um, most of them that I can think of, maybe all of them that I can think of, involve some kind of a mini game or a combination lock. Uh, yeah, uh, as a combination lock, I would say this is probably not super helpful uh, if you have these indicators on because then it's just a matter of trial and error figuring out which one actually works. Uh, if you get rid of the indicators, oh, whoops, Oop. then this becomes a really cool combination lock because I don't know when it's resetting, I don't know when I've gotten any right at all, and chances of me actually stumbling on the right combination would be slim to none. But as a combination lock, this would work pretty well, actually. So anyhow, uh, I hope you find some interesting things to do with this. If you do, please share them. I'd love to hear about them. Uh, and I hope, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in the future. Bye-bye.